Hi there, welcome to the Kong 5-Minute Quick Start Guide. My name is Kevin Chen, Developer Advocate at Kong Inc. And today I'll be giving you an overview of how to get started on Kong quickly. Everything I cover today can be found on our official documentation. You can access that by going to docs.konghq.com. So before we get started, make sure you have Kong installed. It should only take a few minutes and you can find all the necessary instructions on our official webpage. You can also choose whichever environment you want to run Kong in. As for me, I'll be running it in Docker. Second, you want to make sure you've started Kong after installing it. To check, I'm going to make a quick request to the port 8001, which by default is where the Kong admin API sits. You can see the response status code is 200, telling us that Kong is indeed up and running. With that, we're ready to start the guide. In this quick start guide, you'll be adding an API to Kong. In order to do this, you'll first need to add a service. That is the name Kong uses to refer to the upstream APIs and microservices it manages. After adding a service, you'll need to add a route to it. Routes specify how requests are sent to their services after they reach Kong. By configuring the service and the route, you'll be able to make requests through Kong using them. Lastly, we'll be adding plugins. Plugins allow you to add additional functionality to your gateway. We'll be using authentication plugin to secure our API. This is what makes Kong extensible because you get to choose what plugins you want to use for your use case. Some of the other notable ones are rate limiting and logging. Let's get started. First, let's add a service using the admin API. Kong exposes a RESTful admin API on port 8001. It allows you to change Kong configurations, such as adding services and routes uh, via the command line. So here we're going to make a post request to the admin API slash service route. Uh, we're going to be creating a new example service that points to the mockbin API. Here we go, if we press enter, you can see the response status codes of 201, telling you that it is created. Here we have the name, example service, uh, with, within the response JSON, and a few other information that you can look at. As we stated earlier, having a service is not enough. You also need a route for that service. So let's go ahead and now create a new route for our service. Once again, we're going to make a post request to the admin API to create a new route. Uh, we're going to be hitting the example service, uh, which we created earlier, right here. And then we're going to uh, hit the route endpoint for that example service. We're also going to specify the host headers of example.com. And if we press create, uh, it'll respond status code of 201 again, which is great, uh, with created and a bunch of information here. Now that we have a route and a service, we're ready to proxy our request through Kong. So let's issue a, a curl command, but this time we're going to be using the port 8000. Note that by default, Kong handled proxy requests on port 8000. 8001 is just for the admin API to configure the gateway. Awesome, we see an, a successful response, which means Kong is now forwarding requests made to localhost port 8000 to the URL we configured back in step one, which is the Mockman API. If we make the same request again, and this time we just strip out the header, you'll see that we have a static code of 200, which means it's a success, successful request. Uh, it's proxy via Kong 1.3, so you can see the version, and you can also see how much latency the Kong proxy is adding to your request. Uh, as you make more and more requests, uh, the number should get lower because Kong can cache uh, the response and request that you make. Awesome. So now that we have our route and service set up, in the next step, we'll be adding a plugin to see how we can secure our service. To configure the key auth plugin for the service you configured in Kong, we have to issue the following curl request. Once again, we're going to be utilizing the admin API to create a plugin. And this time we're just going to be hitting uh, the service of example service, which we created, uh, and the plugins route, and saying that we want to add a plugin called key auth. 
So we go ahead and make that request. You'll see that the key auth is indeed created uh, with some information in the response JSON here. So now if we make the same request to uh, the uh, port 8000, this time let's add an X, you'll see that now we immediately get a 401 for a request that worked just 30 seconds ago. And you can see that uh, it's saying that it's unauthorized and it's still being proxied through Kong. It's just looking for the key, uh, key authentication. So now that you've configured key auth plugin, you can see how quickly you can secure any services that you might have sitting uh, in your behind your Kong gateway. The power of this is you don't you can specify the plugin to one uh, service, or you can specify to a whole route, or you can specify for the entire gateway. This gives you that granularity of choosing which plugins go where, uh, giving you more control over your microservices. For our next step, we're going to configure the key off plugin and learn how you can add a consumer to your service so now we can continue to proxy request through Kong. So let's go ahead and create a consumer through the RESTful API. Once again, utilizing the admin API, we're going to be uh, hitting the consumer's endpoint this time and adding a consumer named Jason. So we go ahead, we see a 201 created, Jason is created with an ID. This ID will be important later. So the next step is to provision key credentials for your consumer. And to do that, as you guessed, we're going to be using the admin API once again. And this time we're going to be making it uh, a post request to the consumer slash JSON slash key auth endpoint. And here you see that in the data, it says for key, you need to enter key here. This is where you enter the ID that you see in JSON's response code. Response uh, JSON, sorry. So if we go ahead and do that, you'll see that uh, it was created successfully. Uh, that means Jason now has uh, the, uh, the credentials necessary to make the request. So if we go back and make the request to port 8001, we still keep the host header, which is example.com, but now we have to add an additional field, which is the API key. So we take the key for Jason and we plug it in right here. Now you see the request starts to work again. We can strip the body and just look at the header and we get a, a response of 200. Just like that, you quickly added a, um, a service, uh, created a route for that service and secured that service using key auth with the consumer of JSON. Thank you for tuning in to our five minute quick start. You can find a lot more information on our Kong uh, documentation page. Here it is, docs.konghq.com. If you have any additional questions that our documentation doesn't answer, or you just want to talk with the community, please do not hesitate to check out our Kong Nation page. It can be found here at discuss.konghq.com. Here you can ask questions or answer questions if you want to help others. You can also interact with some of our top engineers such as Harry and get his insight on how to use Kong. Once again, Thank you for checking out our quick start guide.